Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, top foxer Mark Ripley shares some of his secrets on how best to catch up with Charlie. Uh, this is one of my um, local regular permissions. Um, I've got the fox box down here. I'll use it for uh, range testing and fox shooting as well. We're out early tomorrow morning doing some foxing, so I've got the Browning X Bolt um, here to test uh, the Swarovski ballistic scope. I've got a target out there at 300 yards, so we're going to um, put it through its paces and see what it's capable of. Mark has been a YouTube foxing celebrity for some time, posting his own videos of long range fox encounters. Now, making his debut for the shooting show, it's time to see what he's really capable of. To take on a fox at 300 yards you need to be dead on. So first up is a trip to the zeroing range with a Swarovski ballistic turret. Right, we're just about to um just test the uh, the rifle now on the target out 300 yards there. So what I need to do is I need to just check the ballistics uh, of the ammunition we're using. So I've entered in the uh, the velocity of the bullet and uh, the size of the bullet and weight into a, uh, a ballistic app on my phone, which is Strelock. Um, the next thing we need to do, it's given me a, a an output of um, three MOA. So We'll adjust the turret, looking it up to 3 MOA, nice and easy, nice positive clicks on that. Next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the, the reticle is vertical, which is what this little bubble level here is for, because we don't want any cant on the rifle. So keep that up right there, I've got a rear bag underneath the back of the rifle just to support that, I'm shooting off a bipod. So I've got a nice sturdy stable position and um, yeah, let's put a round down on that um, target and uh, see what happens. Coming down here and putting that, um, putting some rounds on the target there has just confirmed that everything's uh, shooting as it should be. So we're all good to go for tomorrow. With the range work complete, we're up early the next day for a first light foxing foray. We're out on this permission this morning um, controlling foxes. In the spring, they take a heavy toll on the lambs here, so it's important to keep the numbers down. Uh, although the lambing season's finished now, we'll continue through the year just to keep on top of their numbers um, and hopefully that will make, uh, make life a bit easier for next spring. Normally see quite a few foxes up here, uh, it's pretty rare to, to have a morning out and not see one. Um, yeah there's usually usually quite a few about so uh, I think we've got a pretty good chance of bagging one or maybe two, there's quite a few cubs in that about so yeah. It's a nice dry weather today, so um, wind's not too strong either. It's only about five mile an hour coming down through the valley. So we stand a good chance of, of getting a fox or two. Um, even if it's at a longer range, it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Normally what I'll do is um, sit out, pick a good spot on the hill with a good view, and just sit out and wait, scanning around with the binoculars. and. Um, as soon as you see one, if we can, we get a bit closer, or uh, if it's possible, um, and we've got a good safe shot, we'll take the take the shot from where we are. 
Uh, we're keeping the ranges fairly short today. Um, I'm going to keep it to within 300 yards. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the rifle yet. We've had a little play with it yesterday. We, we're getting it onto steel at 300 yards, so I'm quite confident, quite happy with that. But um, I won't venture out any further with it until I know it a bit better. Soon we get a chance to really test Mark's skills. Through the binos, Mark spies what is clearly a fox. This one's well within Mark's maximum range, so he stalks on just a few more yards before deploying the bipod and getting down for a prone shot. Mark's testing the new Shirovsky X5 scope, and for engaging this fox at a standard range, he dials it right down for a good field of view. Meanwhile, we've got the camera at maximum zoom and managed to get Charlie in frame just in time for Mark to pick his point of aim. Lovely. I just dropped that fox a treat. That was um, broadside about 120, 120 yards. Just rolled it over. Um, there's another fox down there. I saw a couple of minutes ago. Um, I think if we just move around the edge of the bank a little bit more, we might get a chance of another shot. With the sun still rising, we're able to spy more and more of the surrounding countryside from our elevated position. As it happens, we don't have to look very far. Another fox makes its presence known, just yards from where we shot the first one. Mark doesn't waste any time in dealing with this one too. This one wasn't anywhere near 300 yards either, but it's not the distance that counts. It's the numbers you put on the ground, and it's been a very productive morning for Mark. Okay, I've had a great result this morning. Two foxes down on the hill. Um, I'm really pleased with that. Farm's going to be pleased with that. It's important to keep on top of the fox numbers throughout the year. Uh, we haven't got any lambs in the field at the moment, obviously, but um, every fox that we deal with now is one less that's going to cause problems in the spring. Well, that's a chally or two losing their brushes there. And now, it's the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by Gunplan. New research from Northern Ireland shows shootings benefits to wading bird populations. There have been major declines in curlew, lapwing and snipe in Northern Ireland, but the populations on land managed for shooting are stable. In fact, 58% of shoots in Northern Ireland have breeding snipe on them. Basque said shoots are vital for the future of breeding waders. One of the biggest rowheads ever measured has come through the Basque BDS and Sporting Rifle Trophy Service. Shot in the borders, it scored 202 points, making it one of the top dozen heads ever recorded in the UK. It was one of 74 heads measured by the team at the CLA Game Fair. Read the full report on this amazing trophy in Sporting Rifle magazine. And next up on the Game Fair circuit is the Midland Game Fair. 
one of the biggest events on the show circuit, the Midland closes out the game fair season with a host of shooting attractions and unmissable bargains. There'll be a clay line, air gun expo, gamekeepers row and working dog village alongside the usual array of trade stands. And don't miss sporting rifle, air gun shooter and eye shoot magazines while you're there too. Shooting organisations are set to make their views heard in a debate over gun laws. As part of the Law Commission's project to reform firearms legislation, a conference takes place next Tuesday that pits shooting reps against top law enforcement officials. They'll discuss the wide-ranging reforms that the Commission proposed last month, which include unifying all of firearms law into a single code. If you want to have your say, head to lawcom.gov.uk now. And finally, which high-end high street retailer is selling grouse this season? That's right, Iceland. M&S might not be selling the bird this year owing to lower than usual numbers, but Iceland is offering frozen birds for just $8.99 a brace. Far from the traditional roast grouse, this bird needs to be boiled in a pouch, then finished off in a pan. It might be taking all the magic out of it, but it's still game in a supermarket. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.